Welcome to Creative Culture. My name is Steve, and this is a podcast that explores the infinite ways people express creativity and how those people affect our shared culture. If you enjoy this podcast, please take a moment to leave a five-star rating and leave a review wherever you are listening right now. Do it. And don't forget, full video episodes of Creative Culture are now available on YouTube at Creative Culture Pod. Jenna Whiting is a prolific sculptor whose tool of choice is the chainsaw. I've really been looking forward to talking with Jenna because I just want to share her amazing art with you. She began in 2019 and has been carving professionally since 2020, producing hundreds of figures, mostly cute forest figures that she sells through her business, Chainsaw Jenna. She posts videos regularly on TikTok and Instagram, and you can deep dive into her work by watching her long format vlog style videos over on YouTube. Jenna, welcome to the show. Wow. Thanks, Steve. What an introduction. <laughs> That's amazing. I've listened to a couple of your podcasts before and oh, like you give the best introductions ever. <laughs> Seriously. That was great. Thank you for having me. Oh, yeah. I've been excited for this, you know, because chainsaws actually kind of play an important have always played an important role in my life because oh. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of my oh. favorite movies ever made. <laughs> I heard you like horror movies, uh, so I can yeah. see that. And I, I just saw a screening of Texas Chainsaw Massacre at a movie theater right right before Halloween. And it was so cool because I've never seen it in a theater before. And it was just everybody was screaming. It was so oh, awesome. Oh, that's awesome. See, um, I don't, I'm not like a scary movie type of person. Yeah, I like, I don't mind carving scary things. Uh, we yeah. actually just did an event. It was our last event. We travel a lot. And we were out in New Jersey and we did this um, event. It's called Witchcraft. And um, witchcraft has a beer and spirits. So they have all these like little stands everywhere that people it's for adults only, obviously, for people to walk around and like taste all the, the spirits and the booze that they have. And we were there as performers. So we got to like dress up and like everybody looks so scary. And there was actually a um, scary clown who had a chainsaw and he watches Chainsaw Jenna videos and he i went to the restroom and came back and he was talking to my husband ben and i like walked up i'm like oh my gosh this guy looks so scary and i like tried to play it so cool going up to him and like hi it's so nice to meet you and he just like had the best makeup on the best mask and everything it was, it was so crazy but well you could have gotten into a chainsaw duel See, now this, yeah. was in, this was in Texas Chainsaw 2. If we want to get deep in the weeds here, Dennis Hopper was fighting Leatherface with these enormous chainsaws and they were dueling like, like swords. Were they like 881s or? I have no idea what that means. Matt. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's like the biggest chainsaw that you can like so. go out there and purchase. Uh, probably. They were huge. Yeah. It was, just, I, it was crazy. Yeah. I, I can imagine that. Did they have like massive bars? on them yeah, too yeah. Yeah. yeah oh man i'll have to check that out yeah actually the clown and i um <laughs> i feel so bad because i didn't get his name but he had his, ch his chainsaw and i had all my chainsaws because i was performing we took a cool photo and i actually brought my ms881 so like there's a really cool photo i think he tagged me in it on instagram you can see it his whole get up and i'm like holding this massive chainsaw and he has this little chainsaw it's a hilarious <laughs> post it's hilarious See, I have a feeling if you watched that scene from the movie, you would be like, well, you know, you're totally going to ruin those chains by doing that. Oh <laughs> <laughs> I have people hate on me about my chains, too. So what do they hate on about your chains? Oh, it's like they're either too loose or oh. like don't stick them in the ground. Like we were doing like a um, just a fun real shot. And I was actually, it was for the witchcraft of it. And um, I was dressed up as Black Widow. Yeah, and I had, it. yeah, I had my um, MS-881 and it was like on the ground, kind of in the sand. And like people, they're like, you're ruining your chain, you're ruining your chain. I'm like, you're not the one sharpening it. So it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> just shut up yeah people it's like in woodworking people like you shouldn't set a plane on its on its blade you should always lean it on its side and it's just uh, it's just silly ridiculous i things. know 
everyone has a preference on things. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like if you're just comfortable and you feel safe, then just yeah. continue to do what you do. You know what I yeah. mean? You probably like, get a lot of gatekeeping too. I oh, would imagine. yeah, a ton, a ton of it for sure. Especially for like being a female chainsaw carver because yeah. um, people think that there's not that many of us out there, but I feel like there are. Um, we're just like kind of hiding. And it's like I meet a lot of female chainsaw carvers all the time. And it's just like I grew up in this world. So like chainsaw carving is so normal for me. <laughs> and like when I talk about chainsaw carving with other people, they're like, what? You do what? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're like, that's crazy. I'm like, cool. Thank you. <laughs> But, did, yeah. So you grew up with, did your family, were they chainsaw carvers, chainsaw users? What's the, what's the whole chainsaw history here? Okay, so um, I'll try to make this kind of short. It's kind of a long story, but I'll try to go a little short Take your here. time. We ain't going anywhere. Okay, um, so my parents are actually chainsaw artists. Um, my mom is full-time and my dad is like part-time. So my family owns like multiple businesses but my dad is the one who actually like started that spark for the family like um so i live in pennsylvania and there, we actually have the most populated chainsaw artist um so there's this huge event that happens every year it used to go in february and it's called the ridgeway rendezvous and um chainsaw carving roundup so like carvers from all over the world come to this event and carve and it's just like a giant family carving reunion. And um, so my dad like must have gone there and like he got inspired and like wanted to try it. And then like my mom was like, oh, that looks like fun. I think I could do it too. So like she started it, but this was like way before I was even born. Um, so like I grew up in this world, like we do a lot of traveling like that for different fairs and events. And um, I have two younger siblings. So these events weren't really fun for me because I was always the babysitter. I'm the oldest out of the, oh. the three. So it was always like, oh, we had to go to another carving show. And so I always kind of like dreaded it. But I also really enjoyed it because we got to travel and like see a bunch of things. And so it wasn't really, and I was also like a kid, a teenager. Like I didn't want to do what my parents wanted to do. I didn't think that was that cool. So <laughs> and it's so perfectly normal. Yeah, right. And um, so like I knew all through high school, I was in um, all the woodshop classes, like since they would allow you to start in high school, I did the all through high school. And um, I loved being creative. And I do that like whenever I got out. I wanted to go to college for business. I wanted to own my own business because I grew up in a very family business home. And like, I just saw like their passion and stuff that they poured their hearts into and they worked so hard to make like what is theirs. And like, I, I wanted that. I just didn't know what that was. So it wasn't until um, in 2020, I got married and I'm 23 now. So couple years ago like my husband and I Ben got married and we moved out here to his um farm farmland <laughs> and like I grew up in like a small town home and um so whenever we moved it was like the pandemic nobody was working and like jobs were hard and all that and like we were just kind of like playing around like my husband's a videographer so he always loves filming like we always film fun videos together and put it on his youtube channel um banner of vlogs and then like he's like hey like what you know how to use a chainsaw like why don't you just like try it and I'm like okay you know what like i'll try it and so like i gave it a shot and then he started filming me and I was like, get out of here. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. I've never really carved a bear before. Like, I know how to use these tools. I know what these tools are because I grew up around them my whole life. But, like, I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> That's because you weren't paying attention. You were watching the other kids. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, like, 
um, I just started like cutting and like take whittling away here, whittling away there, and just having fun with it. And I actually like grew a real passion for it. And I was like, man, this kind of like bit me in the butt here. <laughs> Cause like I had this opportunity growing up and like seeing my parents carve and um, put all their love and passion into it. And like, I feel like I, if I would have paid attention to that more growing up, I feel like I would be a better artist a better mm. carver, you know what I mean, than I am or, right now. Or you might just be finding your own style separate from theirs, which is interesting too. Yes, exactly. But that's kind of like where Chainsaw Jenna like started. Right. So this is your business, Chainsaw Jenna. Yes. And it's a full-time full -time gig, huh? Absolutely. Absolutely. And also like it kind of became like content creator. So mm -hmm. not only am I a chainsaw artist, but I'm also a content creator. And my husband's the digital producer of Chainsaw Jetta. So it's really fun that like we get to work together all the time and like come up with these creative ideas. We'll have like creative meetings and like come up with these fun ideas. Like, um, I don't know if you saw on my platforms, but we started doing the spinny wheel. Yeah, I like and the spinny wheel. Yeah, so many people love it and we're so happy about that because we wanted to get like our audience more involved with Chainsaw Jenna and we're like, okay, how can we do this? Like we want to grow this community and we want it to be real and raw. So we we're like, okay, let's just figure out something. And um, Ben came up with a great idea with the spinning wheel. I was like, I like it. Let's get it. So we like ordered a cheap spinny wheel from Amazon. It came in the next day <laughs> and we we're like, okay, let's like get some ideas. And like we had so many ideas, but we wanted to hear everybody else's. So we like did a post. We we're like, hey, we got the spinny wheel. Give us some ideas and let's have fun together. Come on, guys. So they like comment below like all these ideas. So I gave them a topic. It was um, animals. And um, I just really love this this whole spinning wheel idea. And we're still going to do it um, because it's still pretty new. And I just love it because I feel like it's really pushing me out of my comfort zone. Because, mm -hmm. like, we're so used, especially me, like, I'll get into this habit of just carving bears all day. Cute, cute forest critters. All day. Yeah, yeah. And I love those critters. Don't get me wrong. Like, they pay the bills. But, like, I want to grow myself. Oh, you did see Slimer. what I can do. I saw yeah. Slimer. I saw the, the really cool one was this, like, pumpkin. It reminded me of Trick or Treat movie, but the pumpkin head oh, character. Oh, yeah. So cool. Um, Thank so, you. Yeah, so you did that for Halloween also, the spinny wheel. Yeah, I, we did. I that. think Leatherface may have been on that wheel, but I'm not sure. Yes, but, he yeah, was on see, there. I, I, was, I was hoping for him. Yeah, we were, like, it was kind of cutting it short there because we like did a lot of traveling the beginning of october and then like we came back and we're like oh my gosh we gotta do a spinning wheel if, let's just get one out let's just try to get at least one spinning wheel and we did right before halloween and it was slimer and i was like so glad because i had all these orders i had to do yeah. and i was like oh my gosh i have to like start on these orders get these going like if it's something really hard if the yeah. spinning wheel pick, pick something really hard it's going to take me like a whole week to try to do that one carving for do you, feel, do you feel a, a certain sense of pressure on you now that you're doing this for your business that you, you never experienced before? Yeah, I feel like everybody, you know, who's in like in business, in the business world kind of feels that way. You have to push yourself, you know, in these uncomfortable zones in order to grow, to be a better human, a better business owner. But yeah. yeah, definitely. Like chainsaw carving already has like a ton of challenges, especially like if you live in four seasons, like where I live in Pennsylvania, we get all four seasons. Or you're you're in California, right? Right, right. Right. So what do you do you guys like you get you just get sun there all day. <laughs> right? Just sun, sun all year, baby. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> That's no, amazing. We, well, we get it's cool up here. I live in, in the San Francisco area, so we, we get oh, okay. uh, we get fog and but you know generally it's it's pretty much temperate all year round nothing too exciting yeah <laughs> otherwise fog is good for the spooky season oh right? yeah perfect right is that what you used for your uh youtube video with you did the um sword to kill. oh the sword right yeah, yeah. The, yeah. 
AI influence. I just watched that like a couple hours ago. I was like, oh my gosh, this is great. Ben, you got to watch this because that's up his alley. Oh, like that's Ben cool. loves that kind of stuff. Oh, see, I, I do those every year. I do a Halloween video. I've been doing this for 15 years on YouTube. And they, that's uh, crazy. I love, this is my favorite video of the year to make. And it's also the least viewed. <laughs> like it's, just, it's just strictly for me because most of the audience, they're like, oh no, I'm not watching this crap. <laughs> No, so advertise I it, it more. There. I know, yeah. I'll try. I, I, I like it, but it is very, it's a very self-indulgent yeah. video to make, I guess. That's awesome. I think you need to do more videos like that. I think everybody should, really, because it's like who you are. Like, Well, there's the there's kind of a, I, I don't know if you've heard the YouTube kind of rule of thumb, the 80-20 split. You should make like 80% of the videos for your audience and then 20% just do what you really want to do. And yeah. I think there's a lot to be said for that. Right. I know there's so much that goes into it. Ben and I talk about it all the time. He's more like the brains of that. Yeah. What's that? What's that like working with your husband? Is, is there? I mean, you, it sounded like you really enjoy it, but is is there any part of that that is kind of difficult? Um, I mean, yes and no. Like we see each other a lot, but we like. I think we work really well together. We do, you, do you establish really boundaries? Well. Like if you're watching a movie or something, it's like okay, we're not going to talk about chainsaws. <laughs> Well, sometimes it just happens. Like we kind of have to push ourselves to go for a walk or something just to clear our minds. Like we like doing that. We like going for morning walks together. And um, we're actually looking into maybe getting a, a puppy here soon. So go. maybe that can like take the ease off of business. But then we always talk about it. We're like, oh my gosh, people will love him. They will like, you know what I mean? So yeah, you have to work I, it into the thing. Well, how will people like this? Oh, it'll be great yeah. reviews. Yeah, I know it's horrible, but well, no, the, the, I think the we dog do a good will job. force you to do those walks every day. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And you guys, are, what's that like being out there in the? It looks like you're just in the middle of nowhere out there in Pennsylvania. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. I love it. Like I love the peace. I love the quiet. Like I'm the noisiest person on the street. Thank God my neighbors are like a mile away well, from me. I'm sure that's probably a very common question people ask you is like, yeah. do you have neighbors that complain? Oh yeah. No, I think our closest neighbors are our in-laws. Like they're just right up the road and they don't really mind. Yeah. This is my father-in-law. He's a woodworker. We actually share the, the garage Mm -hmm. um, I would call it a carving shop, but we call we call it the garage because it's a shared space. So, yeah. <laughs> no, no, don't call it a garage. <laughs> the garage carving shop just sounds so way so cooler. It sounds super cool, and it, I love your shop though because it, you have a lot of your carvings are in there. You can see how much work you produce, and it's just kind of like all over the place in there. It's really impressive. Thank you. I love your shop too because in your videos you just look so organized and like you got all your clamps everywhere and I actually saw like the YouTube thing and I'm like, did you oh, make yeah. that? No, a viewer sent me that actually. Oh, really? That's so cool. Aw. <laughs> that is so cool. I love that. Yeah, I get a lot of viewers to send stuff and put them up on the walls. You should make stuff. like your own YouTube plaque. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. I've got my two plaques for the silver plaque and the gold plaque, but those are up in my office because they would just get covered with sawdust. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I would probably put it in the shop. I'm like, you belong in here. You would make Blow a video. Well, you know what I found out is that you can order a second one if you want. That's why you see these guys who are like, we're going to destroy the, the gold play button. Oh, so you, could, you could do that. I didn't just, know that. Yeah, you chainsaw one and you get another for keeps. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Actually, like um talking about tools and stuff so i'm actually ter terrified of using the table saw so yeah, a lot, like a lot of people are yeah yeah i that don't know how it you seems do it. so strange to me because from somebody using a chainsaw to me a chainsaw is the most aggressive angry badass tool ever made i mean it's really there's like no safety like no, there's on not. It, you know, it's like, okay, there's a chain spinning around both on both sides. It can, it can just completely sever you 
cut you into two pieces. Yeah. And, and just the sound of a gas powered chainsaw is just so, although when I watch your videos, there's something that's simultaneously comforting and, and satisfying about that sound. And on the other hand, terrifying. <laughs> I could see that. I could see that. I definitely know what you're talking about because it's like, well, to me, it's like such a normal thing that I like dream about chainsaw it's like the chainsaw noise like it doesn't bother me it's just like a background noise <laughs> you dream, you dream about chainsaws dream about chainsaws dream about carvings like yeah i love how i actually have like a notebook beside my bedside and like i'll wake up and i don't know if you have this like I'll, i know a lot of creative people i've talked to kind of have like they wake up and they have like this vision or yeah. something Absolutely. and I'm like oh i gotta like draw that real quick or write it down before i forget because i have yeah. like the worst memory ever and I'm like I have to no write you'll forget you'll wake down. up in the morning and you'll be yeah. upset you'll be like damn what was that I know yeah. it was something so cool oh uh, yeah you'll think about it all day and you're like man if I just written that down what's the, like the out. what's your dream carving right now that you, you have like what top tier um I actually don't I haven't had any recently but like we I actually did a YouTube video about it <laughs> I don't know if you like go back and watch your old YouTube videos and you just kind of cringe. I don't even yourself. like to watch the video I made last week. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you just like post it and forget about it. You're like, yeah, okay, there you go. You're good. <laughs> but like I had this like dream bear and I, I sketched it in my book and it looked so bad, but I was just so excited about it because it was like my first like vision bear, like as soon as I woke up. And I was like, oh, I have to make a YouTube a YouTube video about it. And I called it my dream bear. And I watched it and like I just cringed the whole time because like the drawing is so bad because I was half asleep and I just <laughs> drew it so quick. And then I carved it and I was like so proud of myself of this whole piece and like kind of talked about it. And now I watch at it watch it and i'm like oh that actually doesn't look that good but yeah see this stuff is important especially in the future when you look back on those things because it, it's a those are those are milestones those are those are like posts to let you know how far you've come and where how you've progressed and everything without those the present wouldn't exist right exactly that's, my that's so true <laughs> that's so true and your, your videos though are really really good Props to Ben for yeah. his skills. It, it reminds me kind of like uh, the vlog style is really cool. It's kind of Casey Neistat and inspired. Mm -hmm. and, um, but they're, oh, we they're, love Casey. Yeah, I mean, I, I, that's he's inspired so many people to make vlogs. But yeah. they're they're really well paced and well shot and very cinematic. I think that uh, anybody Aww. would enjoy watching those videos. Yeah, yeah. No, he loves it. He has such a passion for it. Um, like he, I there's like old VHS tapes that I've seen of him with a video camera running around and like jumping off of things and making goofy videos like he has such a passion for it and you can see that in all oh, yeah. of the videos and he makes me look good that's why I tell everybody like he just makes me look like I know what I'm doing and I'm just <laughs> out there like just struggling trying to make something out of wood real quick and be like here you go <laughs> do you feel like you have a little bit of imposter syndrome Oh yeah, yeah. We all I do. def yeah, yeah. If you're a creator, mm -hmm. like I feel like it's just kind of bound to happen. Yeah. You just gotta push through and tell yourself that you are better than what you think you are and Yeah. It looks like you kind of hit your stride on Instagram, started there. You've got quite a quite a big following over there and on TikTok too. Yeah, yeah. They just kinda like shot up out of nowhere and we just been like we just both love doing it we both mm -hmm. love filming together and he loves pushing himself I love pushing myself we're both pushing ourselves in our in our passions and just trying yeah. to make each other better and make ourselves better and like we just do it out of love and out of fun and just like if we could put a smile on someone's face that's like the greatest reward for us honestly like we i don't know if you saw we actually posted today um i actually have him with me beside me but i chainsaw carved luigi um for a boy he has like extreme 
brain cancer that is like progressing really fast. Uh. And he just, yeah, it, his mom actually commented on Facebook and like people were like tagging me in it and I saw it cause like you get so lost in comments and like it was an older video. So, you know, you don't really like look back on them. And, but like people were like tagging me in it and I saw it and I had her email me and she just shared her story and like my heart just sank from like just reading what she emailed me and I'm like wow like I just that's awful can't believe that like people actually go through that like we've, we've been very blessed in my life like I, I haven't had to deal with anything like very tragic mm-hmm. and I just pray to God that like that doesn't happen anytime soon but like it just breaks my heart to hear that people actually go through that stuff like you just like watch her through movies and like I think it's a movie but it's like no that actually happens in people's lives like people go through life and it puts and, you it puts your own experiences into perspective too especially when yeah. you're you know waiting in line for our coffee and it's running late or something and we're getting upset over something so yeah. dumb it's like yeah. oh there's people who have real problems yeah i yeah and it was such a good reality moment and i just wanted she said that um her son loves super mario bros and like she loves he loves luigi and um chance actually wanted to change his name to luigi when he was a younger boy (laughs) and so i was like i just let me just do this like i just want to carve this and give it to him and like we actually posted it and people are just showing him so much love and support and it makes me so happy because i like get like a lot of hate in my videos for certain things that I do or I'm not wearing gloves or whatever. And that was like a video that just made all the videos like this video just shined so much brighter than all the other ones because people actually came together and like showed love. Like it's amazing that there's not one bad comment in there. And it just, that is so I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. Oh my God. It's a beautiful work of art. And then, Oh my gosh. Thank you. I appreciate it. What a story. You've got like, you just posted this seven hours ago. There's like 7,400 likes on this thing. I mean, this is really, really well done. Thank you. Yeah, we just like, we just love what we do and we want to pour our whole hearts into everything that we do, especially pieces like this because this changes people's lives. Like you actually can make an impact Mm -hmm. whether you see it or not. Like, I don't know for you, like, you get so busy in like your world and you're like creating stuff Mm -hmm. and you just like, you're in your own, you're in your own little world. And like, you're like, Oh man, what am I doing? And then like you read comments, like good comments that like, Hey, like you inspired me to go out and like pick up a chainsaw and like try carving or like you inspired me to make this table. And it's just like, it's like, Whoa, that's it is. really this cool. Is, yeah, this is something I think a lot about, especially in the in the past few years. Is and I guess when I, it, you're, it's great that you you're feeling this so soon in in your online media creation world, because if, see, I felt like I was really con- consumed with just cranking out content in those early years, and I, I, I kind of had blinders on to sort of a bigger impact that I was making, and it does, it. it really puts kind of me into perspective on myself and knowing that, okay, I do have a purpose here. There's a purpose that is helping other people. And I hear from those people all the time and I just have to keep my ears open and be available to, to listen to that and hear their stories. And it's amazing when they send me things and, um, I don't know, it's it's a, it's a, it's a great position to be in. Yeah, it is. It's, it's definitely an, an honor for sure. It, they're really small, like those mm-hmm. small voices, but they just they just pierce through your heart like your sword. <laughs> those kind of comments and that kind of reaction can just completely uh, change your entire demeanor, your entire outlook on life. I think a lot of creators spend so much time focusing on the negative comments and, and yeah. the, the damage that those can cause. And it, because mm-hmm. it can, one negative comment can somehow hold more weight than a thousand good comments. But I, I think we all need to be a little bit more conscious about really looking at the, somebody took the time to write those comments just to thank you and just to say that they really like your, your work. And that means something. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah, I think it's too easy to di dismiss those people. And those are the most important mm -hmm. ones. Yeah. They are. They're the ones that keep you going, too. Yeah. And I don't know if you listen to any, like, Gary Vee, mm -hmm. or if you know Gary Vee, but, sure. like, he's such an inspiration. Yeah. And, like, he talks about, like, don't even, like, don't even, like, when you read those comments, like, they're really, like, nothing. Like, you need to know who you are inside. Because mm -hmm. once you know who you are, like, nothing else matters. Right. Nothing else matters. Like, you just continue to pursue your dream and just keep crushing it. And who cares what other people say? Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Because if you feel like you're moving, that's all that. And you see that you're improving. Like, you should see, like, my first car mix. They're just, <laughs> they're, they're crazy bad. <laughs> But do you think do you think that you've always had this feeling of confidence in, in what you're doing um, throughout your life? Oh, <laughs> I don't know if I still do. Honestly, you just, I just I don't know. I think you just need to keep pushing through no matter how hard it is right. and have and have really good support, like have a good support team. Ben's like my huge supporter. He's my best friend, like my partner in crime. He just helps me push through and I'm like, oh man, I don't know, I don't know how I'm gonna carve this. How am I gonna <laughs> do this? Like when we do the spinny wheel and it lands on something and I'm like, I don't even know what the first cut is gonna be and I still need to pick out my log and yeah. come up with something quick. So you guys got married during the lockdown, right? It was like yeah. May or something in twenty twenty. It was oh yeah, it was like literally that month. Like, it was that's May. Just, that, that's crazy. Why? It, it Why? messed everything up. Um, I don't know. Our story is kind of kind of crazy, but we like dated for six months, and then we're like, okay, we're gonna get married. And then the pandemic happened, and we sent all those invites, and then like we had to reset invites, saying that the wedding is going to be pushed back and canceled because of the pandemic. Yeah, it was a whole mess. It was a whole mess. If I would like go back, I would probably do like a small intimate wedding for sure. Did Just you go, were you able to go on a honeymoon? Um, we kind of did. Not really. We went to like West Virginia. Yeah. <laughs> that was like our thing. We like hiking and stuff. So we huh. like hiked the Appalachian Bow. Well, part of it. We didn't hike the whole thing. My gosh. That'd yeah. be crazy. It's like a six month journey hiking that whole thing. So what's like your favorite tool in your shop what's like your go-to oh, tool table saw definitely table what, saw the one that sure. you don't want to use yeah because it's so useful i mean there's really there's not a project i make that doesn't run through that table, through saw, table saw in some way or another and I, I just have i feel like i've i've become one with my particular table <laughs> saw and it's like i just Do you know have a name? All, no, but I no, know all of it's no. weird. They don't even make them anymore. It's a portered cable table saw. Oh. I, I, that was another thing. People, okay, there's this plaque behind me here. This is a list yeah. of people who donated. This was in the early days of my YouTube channel when I had a really crappy table saw. And they all secretly got together and pooled their money together and bought me that table saw that I use oh, today. And that's that was just so a amazing. plaque saying thank you. And that's a little picture of the table saw up on top. That's awesome. <laughs> thank you for telling me that story. That's so cool. I'll think about that when I watch your videos now. So That's do you cool. Have, do you have like a favorite chainsaw? It looks like you've got about 3,000 chainsaws. You've oh. got a lot of chainsaws. Um, I don't think I have enough chainsaws. I think that's one of my my only my hoarder thing is yeah. chainsaws. Like I just want chainsaws and tools. Um, I don't even know how many I have, honestly. Well, you know oh, what? Take, over take, 10. take me take me through this process of of carving something. So let, let's say and 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 explain the various chainsaws that you would use for for carving, say, a bear and, and when those come into play, because they all I, I'm, I'm sure they all have their own specific uses. And then, um, yeah, take me through that whole process from from block of wood to really cool finished art. Yeah, um, that's a great question for anybody who like wants to start chainsaw carving because like again, like I was very blessed to be able to like be in the chainsaw carving world that I know all the tools but didn't know how to really use them. So like I have a couple chainsaws and like different chains, chain like bars. There's like carving bars. Um, so there's like logging bars, carving bars, and like 
I have a lot of carving bars. So, um, and so that's like for the shape bear. of the bar that the, the, yes. the chain spins around, right? So the carving yes, is like a correct. more pointy, shorter one. Is that correct? Yeah, there's like different, just different sizes of bars and chains and, that you can get. And so um, I have like, there's like the block out stage where you just take out those bigger chunks of wood with the chainsaw. And you just, it's honestly just whittling away, whittling away all the pieces that aren't your sculpture that you want. Yeah. It's in there somewhere. It's in there. You just got to keep whittling away. So like you take like the bigger saw with the bigger bar to block away all those bigger chunks. Cause with a smaller saw, saw, smaller bar, it's going to take you forever just, just to get those big chunks out of the way. So you start with the biggest, the smallest and, um, so then like my second saw, so I have like a 260, I guess. I use like all steel and I'm not like a big thing. People are like, oh, Husqvarna is better. Oh, steel is uh, better. Uh, like, Bikini those kind is better. of brand fights yeah. are so annoying. Yeah, they are. But they crack me up because I'm it's like. so weird. Like which big corporation do you love? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, and like I'm not sponsored by any of these people any of these brands either so it's just it's whatever but like maybe you will be at some point maybe one day um but like steel is what i mostly use so i know all their numbers and stuff if you ask me about echo or whatever like i'll have no idea but um so like the steel 260 that's like a decently sized saw big motor so i use that for like the blocking um and then i have like my 201c my ms 201c which is like it's a professional chainsaw. Um, there's like longer runtime on it and it's just like lightweight, has like a spring to it. So it takes away a lot of the bounce hmm. of the saw, the vibration, um, which is like a huge, huge thing. Like the vibration is like huge for chainsaw carvers. They get a lot of arthritis, back problems, all that stuff. Um, so like I use that saw with like a carving bar and just kind of shape it. So there's like blocking, shaping, in like detailing and then like finishing with like your finishers, your paints, all that, your sealer, What's all the, that kind of I stuff. I notice you burning your carvings at, at like at the end before you paint. What's that? What's that all about? You hit it so, with a torch. Yeah, that's like so fun, especially in the winter time because I'm freezing <laughs> and like I just love that part with the burner because it just makes me a little bit warmer. Um, but the burner does a couple things. Like I guess it kind of seals up the wood. Okay. a little bit and but like the main thing it it burns away all the fuzzies i call them fuzzies but they're just like splinterly ends sure. um i'm sure you use it for like your your wood your wood projects like you just kind of burn away all those those fuzzies that you don't I want never, i don't burn anything in my no skin. you don't burn anything you should try it it's so much I have, fun. you're messing I, up fire no i have i have done it in fact i did a halloween project one year by burning burning it and it, it was a lot of fun. It was all charred yeah. looking, but no, not. Was it like a little propane torch? Yeah, that's what I used. Or bro, yeah. Pro, bute, uh, yeah, propane, I guess it was. Propane. Yeah. 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 So, like, it just like birds away all those fuzzies and kind of smooths, smooths out, out the carving. Yeah. yeah. It's like yeah. a preliminary sanding almost. Yeah, exactly. And it gives like some more texture to it a little bit, mm-hmm. but a different type of texture. Because you don't want to like burn it too much because then it takes away all that texture and hard work that you did with your chainsaw right. and your dremel work. Then it becomes, so you gotta, there's a Japanese finishing technique that shoshugiban, which is they burn, they, they burn like literally exterior faces of buildings and things. And it's, it, it's like a weather protection kind of thing. Oh, yeah. that's cool. Yeah. yeah. So I guess it is like a sealer. Like it yeah. just kind of seals everything up. Got yeah. It. So how long does it take you to carve you know, say a medium sized rodent. <laughs> a rodent. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever carved any rodents. No, I haven't. I'll, I'm going to have to now. Yeah, um, car- carve a rat. Carve a rat. <laughs> actually, no, I did carve a rat. I oh, did really? carve a rat. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it was actually for a bike club and they wanted a rat holding an onion. It was like the weirdest request <laughs> ever. Who doesn't want a rat I, holding an onion, right? I know, right? Um, <laughs> I'm sure it was very meaningful to them. Though. Right, right. So so like from the time you take that log and you plop it down on a spike or whatever you do so it doesn't move around and to finish, how long would something like that take? That's like, what, a couple feet high, tall or something? 
Um, yeah, I honestly, I think it just depends on what you're doing and what your oh, mission man. is with that piece. Like, if I'm carving, um, like Luigi, he's like 24 inches, but like he took me so long because that was a piece I've never done before. But like a bear, um, I've made so many of those, like. And it depends, like, what route I want to go with it. Like, I could do it in, like, 30 minutes to an hour to, like, hmm. complete it. But it honestly it honestly depends on, like, what it is and what my mission is for it. Because you could get trapped in the world of, like, okay, what kind of carver do I want to be? Do I want to be a machine and, like, mass produce as mm-hmm. much as I possibly can to make, like, a couple bucks here and there? Or do I actually want to take my time to sculpt something my heart into it and like make a spectacular piece that i never made before and try to get more for it you know so i guess it's just like what is your demeanor like what's where do you want to go with it well see this is why i think the the art that you're making i don't think this is just me i don't think you're charging enough for it i see it on ebay and i'm like yeah and you gotta do this is I think so many artists, especially young and new artists, undersell themselves yeah. a lot. So I think you could I agree with you. command Thank you. a much higher rate for those things. Thank you for saying that. I, that actually like warms my heart up, makes me feel better. Like you just gave me a payment there, so... <laughs> well, uh, price, pricing things is hard. You know, it's it anybody is. will tell you that. It's hard to yeah. know how much people are willing to say. Are you, are you thinking about setting right. up your own website or anything to sell them on? Or are you going to stick with eBay? Um, I I don't know. We kind of bounce around. The idea of setting up a shop, I guess it depends on where um, Chainsaw Jenna, the YouTube channel, goes. Mm-hmm. Getting back to the chainsaws. <laughs> I don't know why, because my experience with chainsaws is, is, is like a love-hate relationship. I feel so oh, empowered yeah. and so cool when I'm using them. But, and this, it's been a long time since I've used a gas-powered chainsaw, is it was just really frustrating because I could never get the damn thing to start. And, and yeah. I, I don't know. What's, That's why I have a million of them. Because <laughs> if one doesn't not. work, I just like grab the other one and I'm like, okay, this better work. <laughs> You have to spend a lot of time just fussing with it to get the like the mix right and everything. Yeah. Well, actually, um, not so much with like the gas and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I use Aspen Fuel and they are just absolutely amazing. It's a two stroke and they're pre mixed already and it's a biodegradable oh, okay. gas mm-hmm. and they actually took away like the benzenes, like they took away all those harsh chemicals that could like get you sick and cause you cancer, which I just think is, is so cool. It's such yeah. like a, like it makes me more excited to carve and not worry about, cause there's so many like harsh chemicals that I'm constantly breathing in, like between like the wood and like all the stains and the seal, all that stuff, the paints. And like knowing that like, hey, there's one less thing that I'm breathing. One less thing and to worry yeah, about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure like for you, like your paints, do you wear like a mask or? Oh, yeah. I wear yeah. a respirator, especially spray paints, you know, because there's yeah. just so many fine particles in the air and oh, yeah. everything. The chainsaws, though, where I live, the county I live in, in Marin County, they've banned gas-powered two-stroke engines for everything. Yeah. Oh, so when we did um, Pinocchio, I don't know if you saw that, mm-hmm. but um, we actually were, like, promoted to do, before the movie uh, Guillermo de Toro's Pinocchio was released on Netflix. Mm-hmm. They um, paid us to do to to carve him and like make a video for him. And um, we were actually supposed to go to California, and we were so excited because they wanted us to make it there. But like the thing, and Netflix tried like everything to get us out there. But like the thing was was the the gas, the the chainsaws. It was mm-hmm. noise pollution. They didn't understand it. Right. And I'm like, I'm a chainsaw girl. <laughs> <laughs> like what do you think is gonna happen All right so like i even tried to um persuade them with like the battery chainsaws because i have a couple of those too yeah and they work really well so if you're like annoyed with gas chainsaws i would definitely try using a battery chainsaw because those are great i love those yeah because they they're here they're like chainsaws lawnmowers that use those engines leaf blowers thank god they leaf blowers although the electric ones really aren't any quieter but wh- why 
Um, is there an advantage to using the gas powered chainsaw as opposed to the, the battery operated ones? Or is it, is it just because they last longer on a tank of gas? Um, more, more power. <laughs> they're, oh, it is. they're more badass and more power, I guess. <laughs> they, they sound a lot cooler. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I think there's, there's pros and cons to everything. And like for the battery saws, like you can definitely like see them evolved and they've definitely progressed a, a lot with the battery saws. Um, I would say that the steel and the Husqvarna's are like the best battery saws out there that you can go and try out. And the only thing is that you have to kind of be careful because the battery time actually lasts longer than the oil that you put in it. Oh, so like you kind of have to time that and figure out like, okay, I need to put more oil in it. Otherwise my saw is going to start burning up and you're going to see sparks or whatever. So I usually wait until that point. <laughs> if I start seeing sparks and smoke up oil in it. Do you sharpen all of those chains or do you just have to buy new? I'm sure you sharpen them, right? Yeah. I have like a cheater tool that steel makes and it kind of takes down the rakers and the files at the same time. Okay. And I have no shame of using it. I am not a pro sharpener at all. <laughs> all my chains are like not the greatest sharpen, but I do sharpen my own chainsaws. Are there certain chainsaws that are made specifically for carving then? Yeah. So there's like the carving bars that um, you can use. There's like um, like the toonie bars and there's different sizes too that you can get. And there's like a dime tip bar. So it's literally like the tip of the bar is a dime. Like it's like the size of a dime. Oh, wow. Yeah, and like then there's the quarter bar, which is like the size of a quarter on the tip. And then like a toonie bar is like in between. I don't really know how to explain it. It's like in between a logger bar and like a quarter bar. So it's like the next size up. Yeah. But that's like, so like the toonie bar is great, or at least for me. Like every carver carves differently and uses their tools differently. I don't think there's a right or wrong way to carve. Like you just do what works for you. And um, so like the toonie bars, I have like a 14 inch toonie bar on my MS201C and like that just kind of like sculpts everything out nice and smooth. Like I do like S shapes with the chainsaw and not really have to do like 90 degree cuts yeah. with it. So, and then I like the eight inch bar is great for like detailing and furring and stuff like that. So you, you would switch out the bars on the saw itself so you don't have, to have um, a separate saw for each one well you can but like it de it depends on the saw but it's just better to get a saw for each bar oh okay so it gives you the excuse to buy more toys <laughs> you get more of those saws yeah it looks and like then there's like dremel work too yeah i was gonna say it looks like you've used a dremel for some of the fine work yeah yeah do you use any dremels yeah 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 it's what dremels do you have like a Brand, like do you know Sabretooth? I don't remember what it is. You'll have to check out Sabretooth. I'm not sponsored by any of these people. <laughs> Except for Aspen I am. But um Sabretooth, they have like really awesome um like different bits for your Dremels. You'll have to check them out because they're really cool. And like I know every carver uses yeah. Sabretooth. And um they there's just like different grits too. It, it's really awesome. They have it like so fine, like paper, like soft sandpaper fine. Yeah. Are you, but are different you, bits for like different textures, eyes and stuff like that. Yeah, I think I saw something with the uh, eyes you were doing. It looked like a cone shape to come in different sizes that you can yeah. kind of carve out those eyeballs. Yeah, you'll have to check out Sabretooth because they just have yeah. like so many different fun bits. And like even they have stuff for like angle grinders too that you can use. And yeah, it's a lot of fun. I haven't tried chisel work though. That's something that I would like to get into. Have you tried any chiseling? Do you do I a have. lot of chiseling? I have. Yeah. I don't do a lot, no. But most of my woodworking is like just practical making furniture and stuff. But yeah. Do you do you use like templates or how how do you or do you just kind of see the the shape that you want to carve and just go for it? It kind of depends on what I'm doing. Um, a lot of the times, like I'll kind of have an idea and I'll just go for it. But if it's something like Luigi that I carved, mm -hmm. like I got I looked at like a couple references and just kind of 
carve what I think it should be because I don't want to make it I, one I can't make it exactly like Luigi mm-hmm. like I'm not a computer I'm a human being with a chainsaw trying to make something look like right something so yeah there's like references um like I'll print out photos or stuff like that or I look on my phone but like a lot of inspiration is actually from um the community like just mm-hmm. the comments and stuff like that do you ever watch BM sculptures? Do you know Blake? He does those amazing epoxy no. and wood sculptures. Oh, no, God. I don't think I have. See, I want to see you and him do a collab. Oh, boy. <laughs> but there, it's, yeah, it's amazing. But he, he's this kind of, he does amazing artwork. And when I was talking to him about it, he was like, oh, no, it's no big deal. You could do this. Oh, and I'm like, no, I couldn't. It's yes, art. Yes, you can. And, no, no, and it's you like can. when I talk to somebody who has this kind of vision, who can see, you know, what it is that they want to make inside of that that log. To me, that's that's like next level. And uh, I, no, uh, I think like everybody can can do it. If you can run a chainsaw, like you can you can carve something. It may not be like super spectacular the first time, <laughs> unless you're like a wizard. Uh huh. Are you left-handed? Do I notice you using a left-handed? Yes, okay. I am. <laughs> I get a lot of hate for that. For you get left-handed. hate for being left-handed. Left. Yeah, yeah, because chainsaws oh. are aren't actually meant to be run left-handed. Oh, like, really? Yeah, I have a greater chance for like kickback and stuff. Hmm. Um, but like kickback can happen to anybody, yeah. and like I've been running a chainsaw for a very long time, and I'm very comfortable with it, and I know where those those danger zones are and I just stay away from them and just be careful. Like I'm not like a crazy carver. I feel like carving the carving culture has definitely evolved a lot. Like it used to be, and I still think it kind of is, but I think it's fading out a lot, but like, it's a lot of like speed carving, like Mm. carve this in one hour, go. And like, they like blow the whistle and everyone has to carve something in an hour and I think now it's since like social media and everything, like I think a lot of people are trying to actually be better carvers, better artists. And I'm not saying like there's amazing carvers out there that have been that are really fast and can carve anything so quickly and it looks <laughs> actually like spectacular. And you're like, yeah. how the heck did you do that? <laughs> but but I that's more of like, a performance. I mean, it, it, yeah. when it comes down to it, who cares? I would much rather see a, a piece of fine art created on a chainsaw than one that was just created in, under a certain time limit. Yeah, yeah. I think it's also, yeah, it definitely is like a performance thing because people don't want to sit there forever, for hours, <laughs> like watching someone carve yeah. something because it gets kind of boring. Like if you have ever watched like actual time carving, like it's, really slow and boring. Yeah. you're like okay give me a saw so i can try it with you or i'm just gonna go do my own thing it's probably so a lot I of think, like standing back and looking at your work yeah, and examining it and, taking yeah. a break i actually have like i have like adhd so like my mind's everywhere all the time and like i'll have like five car rings just stood up and like i'll just bounce back and <laughs> forth and like i can't stop i just have to like work on something different otherwise i'll go i'll go crazy or i'll have like a brain fart i call them an art <laughs> fart like i i don't know what to do anymore i have to work on something else till it comes t- comes to you and then you go at it you're gonna be doing a christmas time spinny wheel maybe i had a feeling Get your comment out there have you already su- have you already asked for suggestions no not yet i think we're trying to wait for thanksgiving because that poor turkey doesn't get a give enough time you know <laughs> everyone forgets about that turkey uh, that's right yeah so see I, this time of this time of the year everything just flies by and i, yeah, I, I always, I always tell woodworkers like if you're going to be making christmas gifts you got to get started on that shit right now yeah yeah I, mean, I usually tell people like if you want a christmas order from me contact me like the end of august because I'm, I'm, I don't, I can't, that pressure for me yeah. to try to get that Christmas present for that s- special someone before Christmas, too much, too much for me. I can't do it. Wow. How many, how many orders do you take on at any, any time? Is there a, ever a time where you just Ooh. have to stop taking orders? Um, so I, it definitely comes in waves for me. 
and how much stress I want because like I do a lot of like traveling like spring summer fall and then it's like Christmas orders so it just depends like where I am how many shows I'm doing that month and stuff like that so I usually do like two or three orders a month um but they're like bigger orders that I'm gonna take time on like I really tried to steer away from like smaller carvings that like someone wants a bear and like I'll just make a bear in my inventory and you can buy it from there you know what I mean that kind of makes sense probably get a lot of people just want a bear yeah give me a plain old bear which I never understood that the whole bear thing everyone (laughs) wants a bear I don't know. I always remember for years driving, if you drive up to the Sierra or something, there's always like these little stores on the side and they'll have a big bear carved out. Yeah. In the front. It's just, it's a thing. I know. I don't, I don't get it. Before we go, I want you to dig deep. Okay. Dig deep. <laughs> Tell me, what is it about chainsaw art that affects you so deeply what is it about it that you're just so passionate about what is it that keeps you doing this what is the best thing about it um i would say the best thing about it is just getting lost and getting into that flow state because whenever you're in that flow state it you're just going like you don't know what time it is you're just in your world and like i like I pray to God all the time with my carvings and I'm just like having conversations with him and just stuff like that. Like it's just really getting in into that flow state and just being creative in your own way. I love it. It's transformative for you just both yeah. personally and you're physically making. Things. Yeah. Yeah. That's beautiful. Thank you. Uh, Jenna, thank you so much for joining me on the show. Thanks, Steve. Thanks so much for having me. I had a great time. It was nice talking to you.